Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Ross. I'm Spencer. And I'm Rich. And this is the podcast about everything and anything off-road. And tonight we are without Chris, who is dodging storms in Kansas. And uh, and we are yeah. in northern New Hampshire. We are in north New Hampshire. Actually, no, we're in Vermont. Oh, yeah, we, we are technically in Vermont. Uh, we were in New Hampshire for the majority of today, and we briefly stepped into Maine, and we're staying in an Airbnb in in Vermont, in uh, in who know, I don't know, somewhere by a racetrack. You know, we, we can we go outside our Airbnb. <laughs> Starts with an M. Start yeah, and, we, and all we hear is is uh, like V8s burning up and down a uh, what we thought was a dirt track until we heard tires squealing on on tarmac um but yeah we are in the new hampshire jericho mountain state park area uh I, again chris isn't here tonight so i am uh i am hosting with my brother spencer and my father rich who have both been on the show but independently i don't think have, you haven't been on the show together no, right no, no, and no. spen you were on a couple weeks ago and yeah you were on one of the first shows. One of the early shows, yep. which has uh, actually has tracked yep. pretty well. Yep. So um, I, I think tonight we should actually talk about the last day um, of, well, ri- of riding. So so we're recording on September 23rd at, at 10 o'clock. Um, I think we should start by talking about what happened on September 22nd. So to set the stage for this, um, we're going to... We're going to skip our normal trajectory of talking about, you know, press cars and and press uh, and press quads and, press you know, trucks. Our, our press trucks and our, <laughs> our and our, our personal uh, vehicular updates and just go straight into some trip stories. So uh, we came up here from Connecticut and lower New York from uh, outside the city as uh, as Long Islanders would call it upstate. <laughs> and. Uh, we are, and I would like to point out that closer to Mike. I would like to point out that um, on a hundred mile stretch of ninety one north, Ross somehow made up a thirty mile gap between us. Um, okay, we were we were pulling a trailer with the quads, mm-hmm. and he was in a uh, he was in a pickup. No trailer. No trailer. Yep. Just a quad in the bed. Just quad. But in in a hundred miles, he made up a, a thirty mile difference when we first started on ninety one north out of Hartford. And for that, I would like to credit both not having a trailer <laughs> and the and twenty the New Hampshire State Police. <laughs> the the uh, the lack of New Hampshire State Police on that stretch of ninety one. And uh, and also the 2023 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, and also the fact that we were running ahead of him and we were radioing back to him. Yeah, uh, we're the uh, we're the speed traps. <laughs> it's like our own little cannonball run, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> None of this actually happened. We're talking about theoreticals. Jimmy and the Bandit. But I will say that the uh, <laughs> the the Tundra is not slow. It's actually kind of great. We're not talking. We're not talking press trucks today. The uh, and I will say that we were averaging with the truck and the trailer somewhere around 70 miles per hour. Kilometers per hour. So, <laughs> someone out there is going to do the math tonight? No, or, we, don't, or, we don't do the math. Well, see, hopefully not the guys who let, who, uh, let you borrow the truck. You better not post this <laughs> yep, thing and get out of the state of New Hampshire. Yep. Nope. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> because they're uh, going to have a target on you. <laughs> no, the, no, I didn't do anything. I was getting passed for what it's worth. <laughs> All right, so let's uh let's let's set the stage. So we are in Vermont riding in New Hampshire around Jericho Mountain State Forest. I am still riding the uh the Polaris Scrambler XP1000S, which is the crazy 55-inch wide guy um with the, you know, big 91 horsepower Pro Star. Spen is driving uh 2016 uh Can-Am Maverick 1000R XXC. 
and it really didn't make it easy figuring he's, out what model you have. He's definitely sure about the fact that it's the <laughs> XXC and not, you know, just the X or the XXC or the XX. We found out for sure, but yeah. we'll get into this in a minute. So, uh, so, so Spen's driving that. He's been driving that for a little while. And Rich, Dad, you I have a uh, 2016 Polaris Razor, Polaris Razor S. Um, One thousand. <clears throat> 1000 we've made a bunch of modifications on it including uh, dual rate springs 30 inch tires and um, uh, a lot of most of the modifications are unfucking the things that we fucked up yeah um but it's it's an awesome uh trail vehicle um is it si- it's 60 inches wide no or, it's about it, it's a little under 60 right like now like 58 yeah okay yeah <clears throat> yeah but it's uh it's 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 set up um perfectly for for what i need it's set up perfectly for what you need when the high mount spare tire is actually bolted down yeah i um i this heard the, a heard the a, least uh, of our problems <clears throat> this weekend so 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 after we're after, deep in UTV okay, so tech, after replacing axles and wheel bearings uh for that, the last few weeks shocks and, and suspension well, over the last yeah. few years so we get out on the trail, and I hear this metallic banging. I can't figure out where it's coming from. And metallic I, bang. Next name, of my next band. And uh, <laughs> and at one of our stops, Sven notices that one of the there's a a, um, a wheel lug in the back of my quad. And one thing leads to another. We look up top, and the um, the wheel lugs for the um, lug nuts for the spare tire were loose. One actually came off, so that was the and, that was the answer and, for that. And I, and I was chasing him. Problem solved of all time. Yeah, seriously. And I was chasing him all day. And, and Russ uh, actually said to me, I hear some banging yeah. coming out. I can't figure out what it is. <laughs> I actually made a bracket. Um, it was actually a, a little extension for um, to go between the OEM guard and the boot on the rear axles it extended about another inch and a half or two inches because that was the area where i was getting um tree branches through <laughs> branches branches those are trees actual <laughs> those actual those trees. trees through <laughs> in this tiny little gap and i and i um i actually had two of my boots that got sliced which led to the axles getting damaged and i had to repair so Re- replace two axles. So I, I'm right in the back, and, and I think that you know that one of these makeshift plastic <laughs> boot and axle guards is contacting something, and there's some crazy, you know, explosion happening. But turns out, for the uh, for the audio listener, imagine a black Polaris Razor with a spare tire mounted at. At top of roof rack level behind where your head would be sitting in the cabin. Um, and somehow the noise made its way down the frame. And yeah. It sounded like it was coming. So, yeah. all right. So that was today. Um, funny, you know, right. on the trails that we that we ride, there's always noise coming out of the machines. Um, well. No, there's always noise coming out of the machines. There's noise and there's noise that's wrong. There's good noise and there's bad noise. We and you have to as you're barreling down the trails, you have to figure out whether you got good noise or bad noise coming out. Uh, yeah, I have trouble with that statement because as someone who is extremely fortunate and you know gracious to ride new things with uh, in the confines of of not worrying about about breakage the noises only come from the the exhaust and the transmission and the wind which you know no my, like my truck i could say the same thing like no. uh, you know no i have noise yeah i i have noise yeah. I mean, all the time certain, there's a certain amount of like rattling that you have just from the frame with the skip plates the way that they're situated and... yeah extra weight in places yeah you know yeah. Everybody in the off-road world knows this, right? It's, the more complexity it, you have, the more weight that you add with aftermarket parts and shit that you carry, 
and the more and you're never going to hear gonna be. you're never okay. going to hear just but the engine which it's, there's always going to be some sort right. of clinking and clanking that comes up behind you that you're trying to figure out if it's the right type or the wrong type but which leads me to another statement that should be made whether it's too early to make this, this or not this it is absolutely amazing um and i'm an engineer it's absolutely amazing that <laughs> what we put these machines <laughs> through um it's 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 amazing that you can you can go today today we uh we covered about 110 miles through the woods and the terrain was rough um it's amazing what we put these machines through and they are still intact in one piece after the ride it's right i mean considering considering the uh the vehicles that you exposed me to when i was a child that barely survived a, a drive to the store right. to get bagels on a Sunday, let alone a trip to the I thought we were going to die driving that Jeep. <laughs> well, you fell out of that Jeep. You did fall out of that Jeep. That, and that, ex, that explains a lot. My swan um, face first. <clears throat> swan dope. Okay, so let's back up. But still, I, I want to, I just yeah, want to yeah, you know, put this out. It's amazing. It's amazing that. We can lean here. Slide a little closer. It's okay. it's, sorry, it's, Chris. I'm really sorry about the audio on it's, this. It's it's it's, it's not, amazing it's that it's, it's amazing that we can that we can do what we do with these things uh, for eight hours or nine hours and beat the absolute crap out of them, um, and just load yeah. them on a trailer and go home. It's a testament to because I will tell you, I had a Jeep before this. And it was an off-road Jeep. 1989 YJ Wrangler, which is the reason that part, I mean, truly, it is, it's, it is, yeah. it's a lot of the reason that we're sitting here. Because yeah, well, if you hadn't gotten well, me into off-roading, I wouldn't have met the Northeast ATV right. guys. And for me, we wouldn't be here with Libby. And for me, it was the it was the 1980 Bronco. That you that decided where I had to get you. out and put the front wheels. Huh. I had to lock and, the front uh, hubs. How, and how did that drive. how did that Bronco fare Not as good. a uh, as Not a as a Not good, but neither was my combine harvester for trees. Neither <laughs> the tree harvesting was great. Saying. The tree harvesting is great. My off roading ability was terrible. But anyhow, um, these these machines, um, whether it's a yeah. Polaris or Can Am or whatever else they got out there, the Yamahas yeah. or whatever, and we've seen a lot of them on the trails today. Um, it's amazing the abuse they take and. Um, you know, and 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 what they go through the on a God. you know on a normal ride, it, it really is. It's great. I mean, if you could go back in time and say you do 110 miles in something and have like, I mean, the physical fatigue if you did a day like today over the terrain that we did today in in a jeep. Forget it. But we could be destroyed. Forget it. Forget it's it. crazy. But this goes back to the conversation we were having earlier, which was there's a clear difference between riding the shit out no. of a machine when you and you abusing a machine. Yeah, mechanical sympathy is yes. the phrase for it. And yeah. and and understanding what type of what type of riding you're doing, what type of trails you're riding on, and and knowing when to push things, when not to. And the machines, for the most part, will respond to how you treat them. So another thing is we have a group of guys that we've been riding with for 15 or 20 years. Got to give a uh, a shout out. To, Ten, year, ten to, years for the specific group. To Lost Moose, Lost Moose, New England. Yep. Um, yep. It's a it's a pleasure to ride with people that that you're comfortable with, and everybody knows um, everybody knows everybody else's riding ability, style, and ability, and their personalities. Yeah. Um, so we can cover ground that it would probably take another group a long time yeah. to you know to try to get to the same level that we're at and that's not a i mean it's not a bragging thing as much as it is a reality like it's not just knowing each other's riding style and riding ability but it also brings into 
question like there's so much psychological weight behind the safety of this hobby and like i and mean take care of the guy behind you Make yeah sure the guy behind you is good you're like only as a... fast as the slowest guy in your group and you're only as safe right. as the least experienced person in your group and when everybody's kind of on that same level you can cruise at the same speed you can you know go over the same kind of of obstacles and terrain and cover ground at the same speed and it's understanding when you need to kind of slow things down yeah. for someone's you know when you can pick up some some miles or you know. take a breather right. you know so, or so or like, fucking let it rip right so for me today i was telling them that my eyes my my uh eyesight was either straight ahead to see where spen was ahead of me it was dusty it, it was, dusty. was dusty. so i was yeah, trying yeah. to trying to see the group ahead of me very dusty i was also concentrating on my uh my engine temperature um it was it, it was, was probably like 70 was degrees yeah, but my 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 um but the claws engine... they were having trouble breathing it was du- it was dusty Dude, and it we was had a, we had a super huge, humid we had, super humid we had a huge change in elevation today um relatively speaking we were going from yeah from what we were going from 1200 feet to yeah 11 12 up to 24 and it, it it was a it was a quick change. It wasn't like a gradual change. The the hills today they were, were really steep. Yeah. You know. um, so you and, watch him, some, and then I was also watching in my mirror for Ross. He was he was behind me. I ran I ran sweeper. So uh, gunner as it is, just making sure he was work? you know he was staying behind me. So no problem. You know, level of concentration was you know was between those those three things. But that that's such a testament to the group that we have and the people that you spend time on these trails in the woods with time and time again, like you can let the front of the group go a half mile ahead and let the whole, we were talking about the accordion effect, you know, yep. and you come together and you, everybody looks around, thumbs up, keep going. Like it, that's yeah. just like, so, a, I mean, sometimes and, and it, it, the knowing the group and knowing the person behind you and in front of you, there mm-hmm. is the, the difference in waiting can range from wait, give them a breather, you know, make sure that they get a, you know, they get a moment to kind of catch their breath to give them, you know, let them give you a thumbs up. Wipe your just, goggles off. To just wait to see their headlights and Scratch your get the hell going. Yeah. Like, yeah. So anyhow, for the, uh, for the technical people uh, in, in who are listening, for, why don't, why don't we go back to the start of our ride? So the start Yesterday. of our so the start of our ride so so we're coming up from I'm coming from Connecticut, Spen and Rich, Dad coming from uh, from New York, and uh, and we're coming up to New Hampshire on a on a Friday. So you know, take the day of Friday off, and we're hoping to spend some time in the trails on Friday. So we go to the parking lot at, at uh what's it's Jericho, Jericho Outdoors Jericho Outdoors, Cat which dealer. is an Arctic Cat dealer. Asparna. Us, yeah and uh and we we've parked we this is the same place that we used as a trailhead last year when we were up here and uh and we 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 saddle up we get on the road we go about a quarter mile down the road and spen pulls over to the right and i think this is I mean, you know, I, mean, I think he's I mean, checking his GPS and trying to. Figure I think out he's the maps. Li- same. I thought he was pulling over to look at the trail map and try to figure out what the fuck we're going because I sure I I can't remember where we're going when we go to the club, you know, which we've been to a hundred times at this point. And uh, needless to say, the uh, the ever reliable Maverick decided to not be reliable. So can you tell the audience about how? One of the most reliable vehicles in the off-road world decided to not be reliable. So typically Saturdays are our, our big rides, our longer rides. And Fridays are kind of our shakedown run. And, you know, we we kind of know the Jericho, Berlin, Gorham, uh, Jefferson, Stark area pretty well at this point. So we're able to run through Berlin, Gorham, and, and Jericho and, you know, a, a small enough amount of time that, that it takes less than an afternoon um so we were we were planning to go uh from jericho outdoors into berlin 
down into Gorham, up through Jericho, and then back to the parking lot and just kind of use that as a shakedown run for, for our Saturday ride. And, and I mean, we put a shit ton yeah, of effort we, into we, these we, things. So if we're going to be here on a Friday, one o'clock, two o'clock, we might as well, might as well know, get some good riding well and get some, some good, time and, on the and, trails. And like, look, Jericho, you don't the, go to the beach at one o'clock, the, you know, for a long weekend. And then, yeah. And, and the thing we'll say about Jericho, oh my God. Is, oh, look at the little Daisy baby. Uh, yeah, I haven't <laughs> the, changed that. The thing, we'll, the thing we'll say about Jericho <laughs> is over that. the years no, the 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 trails have gotten significantly more beat up. Um, As the side by side hobby has uh, exploded, and some of it's the weight of the machines, and some of it is the um, just the the way that people are since uh, um, since COVID riding them. Yeah, um, it's been it's different since COVID. There's no question. Yeah. Um, but Jericho does have some great views, views some great yeah. scenery, and by all means, there are places, the warming hut and the windmills, um, mm-hmm. the lake, yep. they are three spots that if you're in this area, you're going to Jericho, you got to Unquestionably, are, one of they, the best places to ride in the North East. You, you have yeah. to, you <clears throat> have to hit them. You will not regret it. Um, but on our way into <laughs> Berlin, uh, we and you can ride on the roads yes, in New Hampshire. Can, you can, if you're registered, you can is, ride on the local roads. And it is clearly marked and made. And, made. Yeah, yeah, and it's clearly so, marked where it says ATV route, shared yep. ATV route. Yep. You're good to ride there. So we get on the road on the so, tarmac. So we got on we the go road about, a about eighth, eighth, of a mile. eighth of a mile, and the Maverick, which is always reliable, and yeah, it's built like a fucking freightliner. It like, is. It is built unbelievably well. I got. A check engine light and the RPMs absolutely plummeted. And it was and, idling. And I jumped. Got, it was up and down. Yeah, and it was idling jumpy. And, and it, I got yeah, a got message limped. that uh, I'd never even heard of before, which was limp home mode. Which, if which you're familiar essentially with protects the engine vehicles. from killing itself. Yeah. Um, limp mode in, in cars is generally, it pulls timing. <clears throat> it starves the engine of fuel deliberately to save itself from chewing itself alive. And so... So the cannon decided to do this. It was immediately, <laughs> Which, turn mean, around, get back to the parking lot, and in my mind I was saying, weekend's done, I'll ride in the Razor. And and this is this hot is on the tails I'll throw of, this. of Can-Am very graciously letting us borrow an Outlander 700 XT to review. Uh, which Spen, this is actually the first quad that Spen's going to yep. ride to review, um, and we're looking forward to it. And they well, believe it or not, they we decided to leave it. Twenty five hundred Silverado and Mike lean to the mic. We we don't have room for well, a quad in the back. You you do because we've done this last year. Two, two, it's amazing two years ago. how much stuff we have to take for a two-day trip up north. It'll fit in the back of your truck. If that's so. in the back of the truck, then everything that's in the back of the truck is going in your truck. That's going in your truck. That's us. <laughs> we so, can't. We have coolers. Right. We have spare tires. We have tools. We have jacks. We have the spare tires should live on the. What else do we have? Here? We have boxes that's for right. helmets. We have we have bags of gloves. Uh, anyways, we so have, anyways, anyways, the the can. Thank you, Can Am. So, thank you, Neil, for doing that. We'll we'll have stories about that to come. But, yes. Uh, needless to say, so we we had a, a we brief windshield on the can. Brief have, moment of panic. So we it does have a windshield. It does have windshield. Yeah, windshield. It would have been really nice in the morning when it was like forty eight degrees. So we yeah. limp the uh, Maverick back to the parking lot, and um, Ross had done me a favor and he ran across the street into rode across the street to the Can-Am dealership. It wasn't a favor. Was, it was the wherewithal um, to look around and try and figure out what our surroundings would let us which, do. Which was uh, Dalton Motorsports in, um, in Jericho. Jericho. Yeah. Well, Berlin. 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 Technically Berlin, Berlin. Yeah. New Hampshire. Um, and they happened to have a, Perfect time, uh, the perfect, perfect, timed timed perfect time, perfect time opening in uh, with one quad leaving their service. 
uh, you know, their bays. And, and, I, so and I should mention the tech they, who really he, what was that guy's what name? he was doing. You know what that guy's name no, was? They, they had... Jack, he was maybe? great. This they, guy was great. And so so they did me a huge favor, tech. and they, they took us in last, last second. Like, they were, um, they were dying to go home on a they, Friday. They afternoon. were getting ready to close up, finish up for the yeah. week. Um, and he, he took me in last second, um, hmm? brought, hmm. actually let me hang out with him. Uh, yeah. Like, um, usually... showed me, showed me, you know, when he was plugging the computer in and, so, okay. and, and, you know, doing any diagnostics that he had. Um, so it was a cylinder one misfire. It only happened a few times, but because it happened enough, it was basically shutting it, down. shutting cylinder one down, which is the front cylinder in the Maverick. So, because these are such reliable engines, the solution is throw a set new pl- new set of plugs in there. So, and that was what he did. Yeah, and he threw new plugs in both. Um, and and he charged you back up. He, he half checked. hour labor when so, he spent so forty five minutes checked, on it. Yes, and so he had checked. Amazing. Um, that is like service is sir, like. He he was able to with the computer uh, having the knowledge. He was able to you know shut one cylinder down and and really evaluate it before Which we is so cool. play with the plugs. It's so cool seeing uh, that happen. Yeah, it is. He, he um, clicks a button and it's like okay, I shut down cylinder one with my mouse, but nothing happened. Oh, I shut down cylinder two. Oh, your engine died. It's yeah. so cool. Um, love that. And just I you know. Unfortunately, in owning ATVs and UTVs, you come across your fair share of people in service who either take advantage of you or um, just aren't always Have in it for no the right fucking clue what they're doing. Yeah, aren't in it for the right things. Don't know what they're doing. Um, when you find people who do good work and genuinely just care about taking care of people and their their machines it makes a huge difference and yeah. the guys at at dalton just really um they give shits they cared and they and it, and it really showed um day saver very, weekend saver weekend saver yeah. and and yeah. you know you you just they they deserve every bit of business they get it just, the, um just as an aside um, Libby's Motorsports in New Haven, Polaris dealer, dealer. New Haven, Connecticut. Game yes. saver. Pizza Game Central saver. of the United Game States. Saver. The um, Zapartis. The best. The best. <laughs> Shut up, Zapartis. <laughs> I had an issue with my Skip Polaris. Pappies. I don't want to name names. I had some horrible dealers in the area. Uh, Libby's, unbelievable. Yeah, fantastic. The, yeah. You know the yeah. the good guys in this deserve credit. Because, hey, it's the same thing for the trucks. It's yeah. the same thing. It's the same thing for the cars too. You know, motorsports. Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah. Like, there's there's good, there's bad, and there's evil. You yeah. know, and that that transcends not just cars and trucks and quads, but in every hobby. Yep. So, anyways, we're we're we're. Uh, so we're, I think we've beaten this this horse. So, together. anyways, so we got on. Just so, to close this loop. so new just new spark plugs uh, miraculously he, made this Maverick run <laughs> great. So he saw the spark plugs started perfectly. Which original uh, spark plugs are? Twenty sixteen. We did a take two. Mm. We mm. we went mm. down this uh, down the same road into Berlin. Uh, had a beautiful ride down into Gorham. You guys didn't see me when we passed the spot that it died the first time. I was going like, I was like cheering. I was not looking back, man. <laughs> I was out of that place. Oh yeah, no, I was, I was celebrating um, from the rear. So we rode down through Berlin into Gorham. The there you go. Uh, celebrating and from the rear. You do that a lot, don't you? Hell yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and so go. We went up into Jericho. <laughs> Not good, Bob. Jericho is beat up. Jericho yeah, so is, so Jericho Mountain State Forest is that what it's called? Yeah, it's, it's a State, uh, Park. State Park. So it's it, it's it's, a, it's the it's the, mecca, it's the mecca of the Northeast. Yeah, but, they they host a an enormous summer event. 
Yeah, rally. What are yeah. they, whatever. Multiple events. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, Jericho's a big time deal. It's just outside Mount Washington. It's which, if you yeah. haven't done it, Mount Washington, it's a road. Take a car. <laughs> Don't yeah. take your quad. No, it's so cold. No. <laughs> it's well, it was. It it's doesn't stopped. start out cold, but let me tell you, you, you turn also, one corner. We only got. We only got like, halfway up. Yeah, but you, you turn one freezing. corner and it's like it drops okay. thirty degrees, and the wind picks up Here. like to fifty you know miles what, per hour. You know what you gain? In October. You know what you gain by going up on a quad? Nothing. Manliness. <laughs> Pack as many people as you can into a friggin' van or truck and. Anyways, so we ended up doing like 35 miles on Friday, and yeah. uh, just three of us. 35 in about an hour and a half or so. Yeah, we were we were cruising. We went up to the warming hut. We did the windmills. Uh, Jer- outlook. Jericho is a great place to ride. All three of us wish that they were taking a little better care of the trails. The corrugations are gnarly. They are like... The little ripply ruts, you know, that that I don't know if they do them for like like water drainage, drainage. purposes or if it's to try to deliberately slow people down. I think it's to slow people but down. But either way. If you have dentures, if you have dentures, not and I'm, you know, like getting to that age, but you have dentures, they're going to fall out. <laughs> I, I I shit you not. When we used to ride really tough places in Massachusetts, I used Your to denture chew, fell out? my denture. It's not all that I fell out. I used to chew gum because it would keep my teeth from smashing into each other when I was riding the brute force. Because you you know you remember what it was like riding those things. Um, yesterday, even with how amazing the suspension is on that scrambler. It was the first time in a long time that I thought that I wished I had been chewing gum. Did your di- no? <laughs> it's still in there. Thank you, Sven. Uh, that is all right. And, and, not PC, buddy. And anyhow, that leads me to the next, the next thing. Um, looking at that quad in the what quad. Your quad in the mm, rear view mirror. The, not, not my quad. Scrambler. The, the Scrambler. The Scrambler XP 1000S. <laughs> Thank you again, Polaris. Let me tell you something. I've I've been watching you ride machines behind, One second. behind us One second. for a while. We've been riding <laughs> since 2004. That machine, We're almost at 20 years. That machine, you make up some ground. When you fall behind, you make up some ground. And I'm telling you, that machine looks amazing. It's amazing. Mean. It's mean. It it just yeah. looks. It, I see it coming up, and it's and it's just the fifty five inch width. It's got to be the stance, it's but the it's stance. also yeah. just the way it handles these trails. It is. If I didn't have a side by side, that would be the quad that I would want to be on. There's no other quad for for side by side. I mean, at this point, like so, the it's basically an ace, a player's ace. With no cage, with no cage and, and handlebars handle instead of the steer. steering. Yeah, it's it's mean. It's great. And uh, but to be able to do what we did today, a hundred and some odd miles, one fifteen, um, and be able to actually, you know, well, raise your hand and drink a beer. The difference is tonight is is amazing to me. I really did is. I did one twenty on the brute force when I was like twenty yeah, well, well, twenty. Let let's just three. Set and I could, up, and, that and was I was in so much better shape. Better shape. Also, the quad had no power steering. Well, I could barely yeah, yeah. lift any of my limbs. Remember, Spencer had to wipe you. You had five. <laughs> I had a fifth. <laughs> Man, this shows me. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> I hope you find a better home. Hi, Chris. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing. Um, but I. I We've we've talked this up and down. Like I maintain, I, I having you know had back surgery and a back injury. Like I, I feel less physically abused on the quad than I do on the side by sides because I can stand and use my legs and use the suspension. <laughs> Bye, Ted. <laughs> no. No, sir. I'm no, but I, I'm. You think I'm fucking joking? But like, I, I, I can, I, I can use all that stuff 
better to absorb the impacts than I can in this side in a side by side it, it just goes straight in your back and you know yeah, that yeah. like you have the tires that take a little of the beating you have the suspension that takes some of it depending <clears throat> on the way you set the suspension up and then there's then it's just it's shoulders, straight into, the, it's, my, my shoulders with the harnesses took the most beating yeah, today your harnesses need to because be, I we, was thrown back and forth right. on some of these hills and the, some of the bumps right and the harnesses, you know, come over here, and they actually. Fi- it's a. I, it, my it a my left shoulder is actually like it's one raw two. From, it's one two, and that's all I, I usually. It's a, it's a four. It's a four point arm. So yeah, yeah, but I usually just buckle the top. Yeah. Um, so. Either I mean I I I maintain I. But it, it, like it's, I, it's I, amazing I, looking in the rearview mirror to see the stability of this quad coming. You know, coming up yeah, behind you. It's, it's that's incredible. that's that's the craziest thing. I've been around the um, quad for twenty, yeah, twenty two thousand four. So we're a year you know, shy of twenty years. It's it's and not it's, bouncing. It's just stable, and yes. I see the power because he falls behind from time to time, and then I, you know, I kind of wait just to make sure he's okay, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's, you know, he's right behind me. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. It's a, it's a fucking like. It's an amazing machine. It's an absolutely amazing. Yeah, and, and it's it's not to disparage any of the other amazing machines. No, because you like the uh, the Sportsman also. The Sportsman One Thousand was also amazing. Yeah, and, but this and, this is and the Can M Six Fifty that that I rode up here a couple of years ago was also amazing. But like this, the XP One Thousand S package is just yeah crazy. I mean, Spen rode it when it got delivered, and <laughs> there's an amazing video, which is like if Vine was still a thing. That would I wonder been... if Chris could edit like... it into this so that as you as you talk about it, it's just yeah. Just... You should send him that video. It's it's fucking funny, but um, but yeah, no. This this scrambler is like it's 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 like three things away from perfect in my mind. You know, I have grown up with Ross being, I love you, but so particular and snobby about vehicles oh yeah i'm an asshole oh my God. i mean i'm I'm not like i i i i'm not the most the, part i drive things or i'm I not ride like things and i say but... i like it i don't like it i like it and ross will just i mean i buy me out as i buy me out as in fancy forerunners like i'm he, not i i don't buy like you know by all means cars. it works they're there is a very, very, very short list of vehicles that I've ever seen Ross either get out of or get off of. Yeah. <laughs> Where there is a <laughs> there is a smile on his face that you can't just you can't just wipe away. Like it is there's clearly a connection with that vehicle and yeah. the scrambler is yeah. one of those players now and you had a great relationship with your previous scrambler there's a 50 but this nine. one is a different level yeah and it's honestly from what i've gathered by both you know seeing him on it and also riding it a little bit at times um, it's worth every bit of it. Yeah, eighteen grand's a fuck ton of money for. No, I'm saying for, worth for, every bit of your smile. Oh my, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your smile's hey, priceless. I I had a guy. But wait a second. Do come you think, up to me. Do you think the engineering is any different in that from a thirty thousand dollar X three? Um, that is a very complicated question. Yeah, I I think. I think the engineering is the same. It's yeah, I mean it's it's different means to the same end. Um I think a thirty thousand dollar X three these days. And we were talking before, you cannot believe how many so, of these machines we saw today on the trail. The difference is I think the amount of money that they've spent engineering the X threes divided by the number of X threes that they've sold broken out is probably more profitable 
than how much they spent developing the Scrambler XP one thousand S divided by how many of those they've sold. But I also think I think there I are, also think it's demand in the side by side market versus oh, yeah, yeah, demand yeah. in the Dude, ATV market. The because COVID your, your machine should be over twenty grand. Easy. I don't I don't know if I agree with that. I mean I think I think 15, like, so the brute force, if like, this is such a difficult topic because we're talking about in, inflation and demand and time. Yes. Yeah. And it, it, right. we're like, there's so much at play here. And, and like, you take a machine like the Grizzly 700, which I love Yamaha. I love the Grizzly 700. They haven't really changed anything over the last ten years, what and they, the price has gone up shout and up. Yamaha, and up. Yeah, shout out I Yamaha. Mean, their vehicles have never failed me. Yeah, they literally started every single time I've ever owned one. The first side by side I'd buy is right. Armex. I, I love Yamaha. Right, and, you know? and Spen's got it. Um, Spen's got a Can Am. I have a Polaris. He's got a Can Can Am. I have a Polaris, and we were both talking. If we were to sell our vehicles right now, what would we get to replace them? This and, is a great. Great topic. This is because this is like, this isn't fantasy forty five thousand dollars side by side land. This is right. realistic. So the, I'm going to drive it so the in low speed and fast. Right. And the X three like, are the an shit amazing, amazing yeah. looking vehicle. I mean, we saw how They're, many? How many do you think we saw today? I I, I would wager that probably twenty five. It was Easy. a fifth of the vehicles we saw today were were X threes. And I would say not necessarily close to X threes. Close to fifty percent of the side by sides we saw were X threes. Right. And you're talking twenty five to thirty grand per via, per machine. Which is crazy because that's right? m- that's more money than I've spent on seventy five percent of the street vehicles that I've owned. Right. Right. And when I when when Spen was uh in for service, I was talking to one of the Guy's a sales guy. Yeah, and... Tom Libby's best friend. Yeah. Quad was in for service. I was in for service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Ben was in Anyhow, for service. Uh, really. I asked him. He got out. Of, <laughs> he got out of an X three, and I said to him, "What's the going price for these things?" And he said, thirty grand." He said, "We're getting thirty grand because everybody wants." Yeah, them. which is which is. I I think I still think that there's. Were you in for service? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, we 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 we. I think I think that COVID WAPS is still happening there because people are still supply getting into this hobby. And there was also a supply and demand issue. But there will be a time that I still say people are saying if you spend oh, thirty grand on a machine and you go into the woods and you beat the crap out of it and you bump into trees and you scratch it and you have to have it repaired every third ride. You're out of your mind. Yeah. I don't Unless you've got so much disposable income that you really couldn't care less. Hey, for a long time over the last and 10 I'm telling years. You, wait, wait, wait. And I'm telling you, the people that passed us today, I can tell you, they don't have that income. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, Ash. I'll tell you when you're older. Um, there was a long time for the last 10 years when credit was cheap. Interest rates were low. Credit is not cheap now. But it was. It was at right. one point. It was. And everybody who's got a but two year old new, Maverick but X3. These are new machines that are passing us. If it's a two year old X3, really. it looks brand new. And you know what? They got a 0.9 interest rate on one of those fuckers from Can Am. Yeah. Or a 1.9 if they're, you know, yep. if they got a 400 credit level. Anyways, let's, uh, so. We're, I mean, we are planning 20 minutes. We're coming up on 45. So let's, let's talk about today. So okay. we're recording again today, Saturday, September 23rd. Uh, we set out from a uh, parking lot, a launch point. And in what town were we in? Star. Was it? No, I don't think it's, I don't think it's technically Star. No. Roughly Stark, New Hampshire. It was right outside of Star. Right outside Stark, and we took advantage of the success trail system. No, that was no. I'm looking at no, Spen. I don't fucking know. I'm following was, you guys. That was no. That was on the way is down. there a name for this trail system? 
It's the New Hampshire and Maine trail. So we rode so we... from New Hampshire into Maine. Uh, went to we tried to have a target. Oh, wait place. a second. I will target say pl- target that place. at the border for Maine, where they had a sign that says you're entering Maine and you need Maine registration, the trail system changed from groomed yeah to mud. It's like going from New York into Connecticut during a snowstorm. A snowstorm. Yeah, you Correct. cross the border and you're like, oh, Connecticut's great. New York, New York is like fenced. They forgot it. They forgot it's in the plaza. Yeah. Which is crazy because we're talking Hudson Valley, right. eighty four in Hudson Valley. Right. Like you think it'd be good, Connecticut's got you know. But Grenin, Maine, they got, soon, the they second got, we hit Maine, it was deep mud. Uh, the trails were not groomed, um, and not a lot of people on those trails. Yeah, New Hampshire was packed. Maine was. I did have empty. twenty seconds of severe panic over whether I had my Maine registration with me. Mm-hmm. We may have set off from. West Milan. Okay. Italy? I don't, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, that's how you spell it. It's West Milan. West Milan. So, yeah, so we, we, uh, we rode into Maine. It's funny, we, I was a little melancholy this morning. Oh. <laughs> Some smashing pumpkins. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yeah, we rode into Maine. We had a target place of having lunch at a general store. General store, tiny little deli in Maine. Um, they took the. I thought it was going to be a restaurant. Weekend. But it was a general off. store. I told Spen, it reminded me of the place, the the um, the deli at the base of the mountains in New Paltz. When you come to the intersection of forty four and fifty five, and there's it's it's the uh, yeah. Oh God! Mountainside, what is it? Mountainside, uh, mountain deli, mountain house so, or something. It's right. like, but I will say, so, so, on, so we the, rode into Upton, Maine. Wait, that's where before that. Upton. On the way, I will say that if any of you are in Errol, New Hampshire, yes, the general store there is a throwback and is an absolute hoot if you want to go in and see like an old time store. They have everything you could want. From everything you could need, hardware for a supplies ride to clothing, that do with your vehicle. to hunting supplies, to yeah, food, it was it was the, like the coolest thing I've seen in in years. It's like a Cabela's meets a Walmart. Yeah, it was like a like a middle of nowhere Walmart where you're like yeah. you get your yeah. guns, but also your butter. Yeah. Well, no, that would be Jericho outdoors. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, so we rode into Maine. And then we left Maine, came back into New Hampshire, and uh, so from from Upton we you're from, like fourteen so feet from from, the from Upton right. we ended up going south to hook up with the uh, Success Trail, which brought us down to Berlin. Berlin. <clears throat> Hold on, we're we're checking some. Some uh, some internet things here. Okay, yeah. So we rode to to Berlin into Berlin. Yeah, we rode into Berlin. Had lunch at lunch. Well, at we sat down five o'clock. We sat down for lunch at four, and were served lunch at five. Fagans pub. Thank you, Fagans. Uh, each and every. Very good food. Turns Very out, good food. Good food <laughs> burger. But, yeah. Awesome. Almost came up out of me on the way back. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you. Choose selectively what you eat when you're riding quad. Yeah. Get a turkey club. Yeah, Don't get a burger. Yeah, a little more physical on my side. So I wasn't. I had, I had half my fries and and half a sandwich compared to what you guys had. But so yeah, for no. those of you going on long rides, remember pack snacks. Pack Unbelievably snacks. important. Unbelievably important. Yeah, because there's always a chance that you're not going to be able to find the food that you were right. in search of. Yeah, so you have, you could the place you go to is you, closed. There are two you things that you're worried about, the, food and gas. And gas, always bring extra gas. Always. I would say at a minimum. I did better this round. At a minimum, bring two gallons. Per vehicle. Per vehicle. Per vehicle. We, we had a ride uh, a few years ago in New Hampshire where um, we would start out from Stark and we would go to this unmanned gas station. and. Everybody would fill up. Unpersoned 
It was unpersoned, un whatever. And it was, um, it was just a gas station. It was a, it was a concrete was slab, no, was no concrete slab with two pumps. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. We, car, and we went out one day like, and <laughs> we were all like uh -huh. basically low on gas and <laughs> they had run out of gas. I was riding the brute force, so I didn't even know if the fucking float was right or not because it's something and it was mass funny. panic because we were deep into the woods already and we were on the way and and half of the half of the, of the half group the group needed fuel needed fuel and there was no fuel right i was on uh blinking low fuel light for uh, a solid 10 to 15 miles today no uh that, oh, that, that time. Now. yeah I, I rode 10 miles and tj kept telling me if you're running out of fuel, I'll just give you some of the gas that's in the back of my quad. I'll say, just give it to me now. Yeah, because you'll use it. I did ten miles today on the uh, on the one bar, which it's not a problem until it's a problem, you yeah. know. So sorry, fuel bump. Fuel snacks. Um, I still say uh, a buddy system is is the safest way to go. There are people in our group. We were, I was talking to one of the guys today who rode by himself, and you know what? Hey, he's, if, he's you do it all the time. Yeah, I know. It's it's a different yeah. mindset, but um, but, but things happen. You but know? that works. For things us. happen. Things break. But um, everyone works their own way. And but the the greatest thing is just don't do something unsafe for you. Right. And for us, yeah. First of going all, out alone <clears throat> would be a unsafe. Sin. Cardinal sin. And the rule for, of the road. Which you've done before, by the way. I know. Um, well, and okay. Yeah. But for other well, people, in a club for, situation. But, but for other people around here who this is their, you know, this is what they do and they're comfortable doing it, then for them, they make it work and they have their own set of rules. But everyone should have their own set of rules, but the number one rule should always just be safety. It's just don't do anything dumb. <laughs> Baby. Sorry, we're being interrupted by Aww. pictures of a very sleepy baby. Look at this baby. That's a baby. That's you know, <laughs> it's, it's mostly like a. I cleaned up her poop last week. Ben did clean her poop last week. No, the um. <clears throat> I changed my first diaper. It was life changing. I never want to do it again. <laughs> I've done about sixteen hundred thousand. Uh, no, the uh, the general. I'll change you. The takeaway from everything is calculated risk. If you go into the woods every single weekend and know how to maintain your machine and, you know, deal with any situation or circumstance. There's still the what fine. if. There's still the what if. Sure. And if the what if. Sure. You know, there are areas today that we covered where there is no cell service so unless you have a satellite phone you're screwed you get stuck out there There's, sure you know it's not like going to a state park where they have a ranger sitting in the in the parking lot and counting cars and counting people who come back you're out by yourself in this area you're you know nobody's going to know if we disappear out there but again calculated risk if you know your vehicle can handle it if you know that you're capable of doing the trails, if you know you've maintained your vehicle so nothing should go wrong, yeah, you also there's always that, a possibility, but you, like... You also know you, in that case that, you know, TJ would talk to his parents, and if they didn't hear from him, they would know. Sure. And know? where are they going to yeah. find him? Well, they know the they trails. Know, if you they know, know between A and B, wait then a second. you're going to... Yeah, trails. but you, you know, it, it's always something. We went today... And you were, you were tracking trails on your GPS system. But they know but, the wait, trails wait, 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 wait. your but, but how many cutovers did they take that they because, know that we don't know that's not on the map? Because they probably maps? take the same ones. But they're ones. familiar with them. They're familiar with it. They've taken yeah. it before. Do you remember the cutover we took today? It was on this grassy trail. They have yeah. the same GPS well, system. They, they're tracking the same stuff. They have the same GPS they, system. We, the three of us have to remember that this is outside of our perfect comfort zone. Right. Right? This isn't the cutover from hard scrabble to you know 139 isn't what most people would do. They'd go down and take a hundred off. Like it's the same kind of thing for somebody who does this every weekend. 
Mm. You know, again, comfort zones are different for everybody. You guys, that's a whole other conversation. You guys looked at me when I was crazy to drive a sports car for two years through the winters, you know, know? like threshold. Everybody has their own. His sports car was a Miata. Yeah, is the definitive sports car. It's a Miata. Definitive but sports car. just you know, one more comment on it's this. It's, it's amazing it's that the best car ever owned. It, it's, <laughs> amazing, that it's amazing that it's amazing that these ever. guys up here know these tiny trails that go through the woods that are off the grid. But they're not if they're looking at their GPS and they know the tracks. I don't know That's if it's on GPS. Grid. I don't know if that trail is on it GPS. It has to be because they it, have it. There's ATV prohibited signs if you go to the right. There was no sign on that trail. There, there was, was there was nothing. Was there? Yeah. No, the trail we went down on the left. Oh, the, no, no, but that's. But if they have that mark, but if they have that mark, it's not. We're we're we're, we're, we're okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, like I I don't oh, think Jesus I don't fucking think do Christ. How do we get it? We can do another hour on on everybody's right. you know sensibilities. We're actually so coming up on it. Yeah, let's. Uh, anybody have any other takeaways or things they want to talk about? Takeaways. Thing, yeah. Things they, things they. I think we, I think we covered a lot. Beat this horse to death. We beat this horse off to death. And we're all gonna get in bed. <laughs> we're all gonna get in bed, and we're all gonna, we're all gonna lay there and think that we're on like a magic carpet ride I because don't do you don't, don't. Because I'll tell you, yeah. after a hundred mile ride, um, I still feel the hills. Yeah, the ups and downs. Ups and downs. Um, for I'm for a while. <laughs> Um, you know, you've only had that every time because we gave you an edible. No. <laughs> no, that, that's not true. Uh, no, that's that was, not true. That was it's, a joke. It's just, uh, you know, the the ups and downs after a ride like this. Yeah. Which, it's 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 fun to experience. It's a. Uh, New Hampshire keeps winning. It's a yeah. physiological. We had a great day today. We had a great fun wish, day. You know, I wish. I'm hoping that the GoPro came out, you know, the tapes came out. Yeah. If if it if it did work, then we can try to share it. Yeah. Also if my brother just absolutely cuts his like artery in his leg while this is happening. Um I'm talking about not being able to get access to services. He's got a knife like by his leg right now. Just you know, mm-hmm. absolutely bombing down trails, uh miles and miles and miles of trails. You know, just it, it's it's really uh, it was really something. To, yeah, we really had a collective effort. Yeah, really had a. Yeah, Everybody great. came together to fix your machine. Yeah, I didn't actually physically help with yours, but I was you know there. You did the legwork. Did some finding some psychological. Work. I think oh, I, I think, meant I meant getting the thing ready for the trip. I think, even, oh wait, one thing we didn't talk yeah, about before you even had my that steering software. is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving at a, I had the wheel turned at a thirty degree angle oh, the whole day today because because somebody said he knew how to do an alignment. I mean, turns out at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I my when, right when my we right did get front, on the when we did get on paved roads and I did thirty thirty five. Uh, it would, took all of my strength to try to hold hold it. That's because your alignment's also fucked. Yeah, I know. I okay. guess who did it? Not me. I did. You know, it, because he, he did his alignment. He did, he did both of our alignments. His alignment is perfectly fine. You know, I did, I did multiple tests on his. His is fine. It's just that he's got thirty-inch tires that I do did. not react well to being on pavement. Um, I did my one alignment left on the- front wheel mm-hmm. is turned at a significant angle inwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My right front, totally fine. All I got to do is fix the left front. I will say that there were only two times today in the trails that I went up over a hill and I prayed to God that I was going to land on a trail when I came up over the hill. <laughs> As opposed to on and a not person? In, no, not in, in like or in a tree woods? or oh, whatever. Man. Love you know where you just like See, have and no idea where you're going up, and again, it's like but oh, you no. go, but that's you another benefit. The quad, that's another you benefit of the quad. See. I can stand up and go. I can't, yeah. see. and that's why I wanted to move that flash that the the chase light that you have 
Yeah. Because when it's when you go over the hill and you come down on the other side, the chase light disappears behind the right. plastic. But I will say also that there were a bunch of hills that were so steep that as we were going up, I had to look up under my roof to mm. see where I was going. That's so, how steep just, they were. Nothing we did today or yesterday was supremely difficult. No, just put it out there. No, no, not the, also. It was just it was just the this, this scrambler just ate all this shit up. This is great, great. All right, we're gonna wrap this show up before my brother amputates his leg over here because he's got a uh, a knife and his pants in the. He's making. Okay. <laughs> this does not look good. I'm actually like really concerned. Oh, okay, so thank you everybody. Yeah, Chris Chris wraps the show up by saying um follow, that's, follow us on that's great. Spotify. We, we did uh, it. Rate, rate rate and review. No, I think rate, we should review. say one thing. To the mountain. <laughs> rate, review and subscribe. Also Tom when you asked also where he likes his, he said it's just over that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like and rate, like, rate and review, review, subscribe, uh, Off the Road Again podcast on follow, Spotify. You can follow us at Off the Road Again podcast on all the places. Uh, they are can, on Twitter. Hope you enjoyed our show. Yeah, and our comments. Hopefully, and we our stories actually made words make sense after you know fourteen beers um, and a hundred miles of riding. Hundred, hundred and fifteen. It was a long day. A long day. Uh, Sven, do you want to plug your shit or are you not? You want um, people, do you want people to follow you? I don't remember my thing. Um, Sven's on. I think it's. Hey, Sven's on X going to give it to you. <laughs> Some as as pro- uh, uh, <laughs> Sven, uh, Sven's on Twitter as probably. Suave B seventeen on Twitter. It, sh- it should be uh, X. You're, whatever you're, you're going to go by now, it, Elon. You clown. <laughs> Elmo. It's it's Elmo now. Your 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 uh, your handle should be probably ranting about sports. Go like that. No, if you don't no. send your girlfriend a picture of that, then you don't have a girlfriend. Uh, do you want people to follow you, Dad? Nope. Okay, so uh, that's it. We did it. Thank we you. Did it. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm gonna pretend I know how to pause or end this, uh, considering. Oh, we're gonna stop. Mm-hmm.